All right, if you've got questions about the Bamboo Lab H2C, this is their multi-tool changer, nozzle changer, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to try to answer those questions as many of them as I can in a short amount of period. This is going to try and do as little waste as possible on this, this one. Because I know you're. it's getting close to Christmas, the deals are flying, and you want to figure out, is this one the right one for me? And I think I've got a good idea about it. I currently have... A few of them, let me show you real quick. I have most of the bamboo printers that they currently make in the studio right now. These are the P1S that they're phasing out. That's the H2D. Again, the P1S, I've got nine of those. I've got an X1C and I've got the PS2 as well. And then at home, I've got the A1. I don't have the A1 Mini. That's about the only one I really haven't played around with the uh, H2S as well, which is the single head. So there's basically three levels of bamboo printers. There's the A1 series. That's kind of your beginner level, open frame, bed slinger. That means the bed moves back and forth. They're great printers for the money. They really are. Great place to start, okay? Then you've got, you step up into the fully enclosed. And I will fully admit, I have a bias towards fully enclosed printers. I'm in a shop environment. There's dust, there's debris, there's all sorts of stuff. I want to keep that closed. I want to keep my prints isolated. Also allows me to manage the exhaust and stuff. There's some nasty fumes that can come out of it depending on what you're printing. And you want to be able to control that as well. Uh, this one's got a scrubber built in, a bunch of other stuff. So you can, uh, you can rely on that. I have that. I have air that vents outside. I've got a purifier that runs in the shop as well. I try to tackle it from every single level, okay? But anyway, you so you've got the smaller ones, uh, mid-size. The A1 Mini is really small, okay? It's not one of the ones I often recommend. Uh, the A1's a good starting place, uh, good basic like entry kind of level. If you're just new to 3D printing, probably the best place to start. The P1S though, fantastic deal. They're closing them out. They're replaced with the P2S. The P2S is insane. It's a, a great printer and it's hard not to suggest that people step up to it. Plus when you include the sale price and all that kind of stuff, I've got other videos on those. You can go check them out. And then we get to the H series. And H series is their, their pinnacle. It's their, their biggest, literally biggest, baddest, best, does everything kind of, kind of 3D printers. So let's, we're here to talk about the H series. And you can talk about the other ones and stuff like that. The H series, I've got the H2D, which I just showed you, and the H2C. Now the H2C is really just the H2D with the Vortex system added. Now that's their tool changer, nozzle changer, okay? There's kind of a spectrum. You have uh, of ways of changing the tool. You can either do a full tool head that's kind of on this side, and then you can do just the nozzle, which is where the Vortec is, and then there's some in between. Now, I'm not going to get in, in this video about which one's better than that because it's really what you want to do with it. There's all these fanboys wanting to cheer on their brand like, like they're not grown freaking adults. I don't get it. I never will understand the whole fanboying kind of thing. If it, if it works, great, then give them credit for that. If it doesn't work, then say, hey, that doesn't work. And if it doesn't work for you, that doesn't mean it doesn't work for someone else, all right? So one of the benefits of the nozzle changing is the flexibility because it works with that AMS system. That's that color unit up top. And that holds four spools, but this isn't limited to just that. Now there's six nozzles because it's the dual head system. There's six nozzles on one side and then one dedicated nozzle on the other side. So you have seven total, all right, seven. And, but one can't be switched, it just stays the same. The other six can be swapped out. You can have different nozzles, you can have different, uh, different, like different sizes, you can have different colors. You can color swap or you can not color swap, all right? And we're gonna get to that in just a minute. One negative is you can't use different size nozzles in the same print currently. I don't know why, it's a software limitation. There's nothing about the hardware. I don't know why. I'm hoping that they change it soon, hopefully. They, they've been already doing a bunch of updates, making it faster and all sorts of stuff. So hope they're, once they get out in the field and they get feedback from the units telling them how they're, being, how they're doing, then they're going to fine tune it probably. Okay, so hopefully down the road. But don't buy it with hopes, okay? Buy it for what it is, not what you hope it will be. Uh, as far as the color swapping. Now, here's why it's important. Because when you swap colors in one nozzle, which is what most of these other systems do, they only have one nozzle except for the H2D. They have one nozzle and they can have four, actually they can have more filaments now. They've upgraded, you get a whole bunch of them. Uh, and it uh, all goes through one nozzle. And every time you switch, it has to go and purge out some of that plastic, pull in the new one, and then prime with that and print. Well, you're not getting rid of the prime step. That's got to stay in there. All of them still prime. 
But the purge is what's the issue. And the purge, each time it purges, it makes a little bugger kind of, let me see if I can grab one. They like to stick all together. Uh, looks like one of these buggers that looks like this. All right, this little, hey, when they get loose, they look like little bugs running around, they'll freak you out, okay? Uh, but when you print something like, I print these things in most of my other machines. Well, they only change color twice. This is our uh, trays that we make for the Quinn Master Sets. And they only change colors twice. They, they start here, they change once, and then they change again for the numbers up top. So that's only two changes. So two things of purge, not really a big deal for me. But with some models, that purge can be more than the model itself, and that sucks. All right, let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, and here is the color torture chest we did. It's a three color cube, colorized all the way through. And the waste from the H2C was this. That's it. This is the prime tower that was created. So that's technically waste as well. Now this is interesting because another multicolor I did recently was this. This is a five color using the four colors from the AMS and the one color from the, uh, the right side nozzle. And a great little print, but here is the prime tower from that. That is entirely different. In fact, if we compare the two, of course, the height is because of the height of the model. But the structure, I don't know. I don't understand why it did that. That seems a lot more reasonable than that. You tell me. By comparison, here's the same three colors, different three colors, but the same model. It's currently printing and it's doing another one of its color changes. It's been, this is, I started them at the same time. In fact, I started this one first. This one's done. That is not even, a, it's not even a third of the way. Look at that. It's not a third of the way. It's, it's maybe a quarter of the way. And wait till you see the waste. That's the waste. This is, that's madness. That's insane. I'm, I'm canceling this print. All right, I stopped the print. I could not, in good conscience, just for a test to prove you, I mean, come on. That versus that. That's, no, I'm not, I, sorry guys, I know, and everyone wants to see all the way. I'm not gonna waste any more film it. I, I think it's already proven its point. All right, so as you can see, that can be a real pain, and that's why these colored tool changers are becoming like, they're the future of 3D printing. Their prices will come down. They're, these aren't cheap. They're not starter kind of level stuff, and I don't ever recommend this for somebody just getting into the game. Now, if you're starting as a business and you've got a reason to do it, maybe you're selling those bears I just showed you, you know. Uh, there's, you know, I, I could definitely see that because that makes them practical because doing it just one for yourself, I get it. Doing hundreds, thousands of those things, you're just, yeah, that's going to be hard to stay competitive in the market. Just doing a couple color changes, again, not a big deal. By the way, we designed these for the Quinn Master Set. You can check them out over on denatools.com. We got a bunch of other stuff too. But uh, they're only spaced or only measured for the Quinn Master Set because that's the set I have. If you have other Master Sets or Socket Sets, uh, and you want to like take a set of calipers and measure them all and see if they compare, email me at Red Adena Tools. I'll give you more information about what I need. And if we can measure them all and find out it works for you, I'll send you a set for free. All right? So color swapping, that's one of the big wins here. Fully enclosed, that's the other one. If you look at the A1 systems, they are, and I have an A1 at home, by the way, I should mention that. So I've got 14 printers here, nine of which I purchased myself. I got the A1 at home that my son uses. Uh, they're, they're, they're solid printers, but uh, having that open uh, open system means you can't use a lot of the higher end kind of plastics. Also, they're a bed slinger, meaning that the, the head moves up and down and left to right, but the bed moves back and forth to give you that, extra, that third uh, axis. And the problem with that is if you're building something tall and now it's moving back and forth, that's a wobbly little tower, right? And that can be an issue. Um, you're like, well, just lay it down. Well, sometimes you don't want to do that, okay? Uh, so it becomes an issue. That's why I like the fully enclosed. I get access to more types of filaments I can print with. 
uh, going beyond the basics like PLA, which is kind of like your entry level kind of stuff. It, uh, it, it, it is susceptible to impact. It can break. It's more rigid, but it can also break. Uh, it's uh, UV light is so not using outdoors is not a good thing. They, it looks great. There's beautiful looking stuff. P, uh, PETG, that's what we print with this stuff. It is more impact resistant. It's more chemical resistant. It's more UV resistant. You could drop it, throw it around, bounce it, all sorts of stuff, pour, you know, antifreeze on it. It should probably be fine. Uh, and then you get into the advanced materials like ABS. I'm gonna say skip ABS. And I'm, I've got a piece over here. This is the kind of stuff, those shiny, really hard plastics you see. Here's a piece of, it was actually packing material, but this is, you know, this typical shiny, hard kind of plastic that's like super, it's like, I, there's no way I could break, break this now. Uh, this is ABS, all right? But there's another material that's like ABS plus, it's called ASA. Don't even bother with ABS. Go straight to ASA, it's better stuff. But you're gonna need a fully enclosed printer to be able to handle that. Also, you need to have something that can control the temperature inside it. Now, some of the other ones do it passively, like they, they you close the box, it's all boxed up, and then you get heat from the print bed, heat from the nozzle, and that creates heat. And as long as you can manage that heat, vend it sometimes, pull it back in, great. But maybe you need it to be heated to go that really higher end stuff. That's what that sucker can do. So this is the engineers, the, the tool guys, 3D printer, right? Now you get the same thing out of the H2S and the H2D. And I think the H2S is, that's the single nozzle one. It's a great 3D printer. It's absolutely fabulous. And if you're like, I'm really going to do color swapping. Every once in a while, I might want to add a color and you're doing like base color swapping, like I'm talking about with my, my uh, socket trays. Totally fine. Just go with that. You'll be happy as a lark. The one thing, and I, after I got the H2C, I'm like, why would I want, why would I ever use the H2D? One thing I will say is because you have it's a d dedicated dual nozzle, so you got one. You can put an AMS on one, dedicated on the other. But think of this: there are some plastics that don't play well together. PLA and PETG don't work well together. Well, there's this thing called overhang. So you're printing something like this thing right here that I've got. This overhang needed supports printed in there. So like I remember where the lens is. Got a, a needed supports built in so it knew or it could print and this wouldn't sag and droop and make a mess, right? Well, getting them out was kind of a pain, all right? It, they did not want to let go. And I finally got them out and I smoothed them down and it doesn't look bad at all. I mean, it's more than acceptable. But some of the other ones I made, not so much. Let me check this one. Some of them came out really rough. Now this one came out pretty, you can see a little bit of it down in here. You know, you see that little ridge down in there. So. It didn't print perfectly, but it printed well enough. It's a, It catches the purge on that. So who cares what it looks like, right? But maybe you do care. Well, as I said, some of them don't print well or play well together. PLA, PETG, they, don't, they won't bond together. At one point, I screwed up and I put PLA black in with my PETG and didn't notice it. And all of a sudden, my numbers kept sliding off. I'm like, that's wild. Why is that happening? Well, they don't adhere to each other. But that can be a good thing. Use your supports, your print in PEGG, make your supports out of PLA with that other nozzle. And, now, and you don't have to wait for color swapping. There's no waste and just boom, 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 and it builds it up. And then when you're done, they just pop apart. They don't even adhere, adhere to each other. It's like magic. You, you know, just because something is bad doesn't mean it can't be used in a good way, right? Okay, so we've talked about the color swapping, why that's important, the fully enclosed, the temperature control. Let's talk about the AMS. So six colors, there's only four colors up there. What am I doing? Well, I'm about to add a second AMS. I can add multiple AMS. I can have up to 24 spools of color and styles of filament. Brother, that's a lot. Now, you may, I know there's a lot of people who try to gatekeep. Nobody needs more than four colors. They're also the guys, get off my yard. I should pay more than a nickel. I, dude, you don't get to tell people what they need. All right? Just... Get, take some meds or something. I, that is ridiculous when adults act like that. Uh, for those of us old enough to have gone through the whole color wars from uh, uh, CRTs and, and LCDs and displays, I can remember four color and grayscale and, and 16 color and 256. And now we're at like 16 billion or something. It's ridiculous, but it keeps getting better and better. And there's always a reason to add more colors or adding you know other kind of swaps to different types of things and i want to take this nozzle and put it through that nozzle you could do all sorts of stuff in fact it's even smart enough if you have all those colors there's no way it can print on just six so you're still going to get color swapping but it will sit there and go okay 
I know these are gonna get used more, so I'm gonna dedicate nozzles for these. These are gonna get swapped a bunch, so we'll just swap them with this, this one or this two nozzles, and they'll just do the color swapping. And it will get you your best, just through the magic of algorithms, it will get you your best uh, you know, percentage based on which nozzle to use, and it figures it all out itself. Now, quick recap. It's not a cheap system. Don't recommend it for beginners. And unless you know what you want, and this is the one for you, it's a great system. Is a tool changer the right one for you? Is a different type of tool changer? You're gonna to have to answer that for yourself. I'm not your daddy. Uh, and I'm not there seeing exactly what you're doing, but I can tell you, I love it. And I was the guy who thought back in the day that I'll only ever need one color. And I found lots of uses for multicolor, all right? The P1S, as I said, I've bought nine of them and they're workhorses and they're great, but it's hard really, even with the sale price to go, hey, send, spend 550 on the on that, but if you spend, you know, cause you can then also spend $30 more and you can get the, uh, the, the hardened steel so you can print with carbon fiber and stuff like that. But then you want to step up to the AMS Pro and then that, cause that can handle that kind of stuff. This one comes with it. Uh, and then once you add that up, then you're only spitting distance from the PS2. It's hard not to say just get the PS2. And I don't like being that guy who says just buy the other one. All right. Now, again, I, I think I, I don't know if I mentioned, I have another channel. If this, if you want to get more into 3D printing side or the 3D printing business side or all that kind of stuff, I have another channel called 3D Print Rancher. It's, that's what I'm running. They call them farms, but I'm from Montana. We, we don't farm, we ranch. Uh, and so... Uh, go check out 3D Print Rancher if you want more in-depth on that kind of stuff. Uh, if you got questions about it, put it down below. I will try to answer anything I left out. They've got a deal going on right now with the with all this stuff. Uh, I think they've got free shipping or something. I don't know. Check it out. The newer stuff isn't on sale the way the other stuff is. It's just, it's new. It's just came out. A lot of it, they, they've had huge sales through Black Friday. A lot of it is back ordered. I, I can't promise you. But everything I've ordered that's ever been back ordered from Bamboo shipped early, like really early. All right. So hopefully it will come earlier. Uh, full disclosure, they did send me this. They sent me this one, both the H series that I have and the X1C and the A1, the nine P1Ss I bought, I bought myself. Uh, the, we do use, a, we, it's not sponsored. They don't pay, the, pay me anything. They don't get to see the video in advance. They don't get any input to the video. All right. Uh, we do use affiliate links, so we do make money that way. You know the, the game on that, but we've signed up for affiliate, affiliate links with all the brands. So I can recommend any brand and still get paid. And I put my money with Bamboo when I bought my own uh, print branch. And that's the one I recommend to people because I believe in it. I think they've got the best bang for the buck. They're more Apple to you know uh, Android or Linux solution like you see with other stuff. And hey, if you wanna make tending to the machine your hobby, then get a different brand, all right? But if you want to make the stuff you get out to support your shop, to make things that you need, then then Bamboo is the way you the way you want to go because it just works and it works with all sorts of stuff, cool stuff, all right? Anyway, hope I answered all your questions. I know it ran a little bit longer than I wanted to. If you got any other questions, put it down below. If you like what we're doing here, go ahead and chomp the old like button, smash it, subscribe, ring the bell on the way out. You all take care. God bless. And as always, shine on.